What's up, accounting genius? Ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon ay adjusting entries. Ngunit bago ang lahat, pag-usapan muna natin sa accrual basis at cash basis of accounting. Ang tanggap sa PFRS na recording is the accrual basis. Sa accrual basis, income is recognized when earned and expense is recognized when incurred. Ibig sabihin, kahit nakatanggap man tayo ng cash o bayad mula kay client, pero hindi mo pa render yung katumbas na service, hindi tayo pwedeng mag-record ng income. Sa expense naman, kunwari nag-advance payment ka. Yung buong bayad mo is not considered as an expense immediately. So why do we adjust? Ito ay dahil sa accrual basis of accounting kanina. Ina-adjust mo yung monetary amount once na-earn na or na-expense na. Dito papasok si revenue principle. Pag nag-render tayo ng service or nagbenta tayo ng goods, dapat may revenue. Revenue is recognized when the earning process is complete or almost complete. Revenue is recognized in the period when there is a measurable increase in future economic benefits related to either an increase in an asset or a decrease in a liability. Next, matching principle. Siyempre, pag may revenue tayo, Imposibleng wala tayong ginastos. Dito, imamatch mo yung corresponding expenses related to the revenue. So, timing is an important factor in matching the revenue with the related expense. Periodicity concept principle. This principle assumes that the operating life of a business may be divided into time periods so that timely and regular financial reports will be available for the use of decision makers. Halimbawa, nakatanggap tayo ng 100K noong 2019, 60K ay earnings for 2019, and the remaining 40K ay earnings for 2020. If the accounts won't be adjusted, then the 100K might possibly be recorded as earnings only for the year 2019, which is wrong. Okay, for the concept of adjusting entries, let's look at this kwento. Mars, magrenta ko 4 months, January to April, full payment. Dito, Kahit natanggap na ni Marent yung buong rent for 4 months, hindi niya dapat i-record as one-time revenue sa January. Pag natapos ang January, dun palang marirecord ang revenue ni January. Pag natapos si Feb, dun palang marirecord si revenue ni Feb. Same with March and April. Mars, total magkumare naman tayo, baka pwede utang ko na yung apat na buwan na renta. Dito, kabaliktaran ng nauna. But, same concept. Basta natapos si January, may revenue ka na kahit wala ka pa natanggap na cash. Pag natapos si Feb, revenue ulit. Same with March and April. Siyempre, hindi naman haya-hay. Nagpaparenta ka. For sure, may gastos. Dito, halimbawa si Wi-Fi. Kahit nag-advance payment ka for 4 months, divided pa rin dapat yung expenses per month kasi per month naman talaga yun. It is also to coincide with the matching principle. So what are the accounts adjusted? Accrued revenue, accrued expense, unearned revenue, prepaid expense, depreciation expense, and bad debt expense. Para din nyo makalimutan, kantahin nyo si price tag ni Jesse J for accruals. Ibig sabihin, no cash involved pa lang. 
sa unearned income and prepaid expense, may K na, may pera na. Take note, accrued income is an asset. Kasi parang receivable revenue mo yan. Same with prepaid expense, kasi parang you have a receivable benefit. Sa accrued expense naman, liability kasi hindi ka pa nagbibigay ng cash, pero may natanggap ka na na benefit. Sa unearned income, liability kasi nakatanggap ka na ng pera, pero wala ka pang pinoprovide na service. Magsimula muna tayo sa accrued income. June 25. Receive a 60-day 6% notes receivable of 20K for services rendered. Ang journal entry para sa transaction na ito ay debit of notes receivable 20K and a credit of service revenue 20K. Ngayon, interest bearing yung note. Ibig sabihin, may interest pa tayong mare-receive hanggang matapos yung 60 days. Let's compute first the interest. This is 60 days, no? So the 6% is still to be multiplied to 60 over 360 days per year. 6% is per annum or per year. So, ang interest is 200 and not 1,200. For the month of June, ang interest applicable is 16.67, computed as 200 times 5 over 60, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 5 days. Ang July and August, nandyan na rin. So, saan natin gagamitin ang mga interest na ito? Diyan papasok sa adjusting entries. By month end, June 30, mag-journal entry ka dapat ng debit of accrued interest receivable, 16.67, and credit of interest income, 16.67. Kasi by June 30, naka-earn ka naman na talaga ng income for 5 days. At additional receivable mo na din yung 16.67. Sa T-account, ganito ang illustration. Nasa left ang balance na crude interest receivable kasi debit siya, which is also its normal balance. And interest income... Right side kasi credit. Normal balance din ng revenue. July 31, same entry, but this time, the interest income earned is for 31 days. Sa T-account, ganito na. Question, bakit sa accrued interest receivable, may beginning balance? Kasi ang accrued interest receivable ay isang asset account. Ito ay isang real account or permanent account na nakikita sa balance sheet or statement of financial position. Ibig sabihin nagko-continue yung balance unless in this account natanggap na natin yung receivable natin. Sa interest income, yun lang ang nakalagay kasi interest income is a nominal account or temporary account na nakikita naman sa income statement or statement of comprehensive income. Ito ay sinasara or kinoclose monthly under capital account, kaya nazi-zero balance ito by month end. For August 24, again, same entries, but amount is for 24 days. Here's the T account. Ending balance na crude interest receivable, 200. Complete na si 60 days. Once na-receive mo na si cash from customer, magde-debit ka ng cash, 20,200. 20,000 is the face amount of the notes receivable, plus the 200 interest income. Tapos, tatanggalin mo na 
both sinos receivable and sa accrued or accumulated interest receivable. Dito, trip ko lang i-cross out yung mga na-reverse na accounts for you to see what happens sa balances ng final accounts. May cash ka na na 20,200. May service revenue ka na na 20,000. At interest income na 200. By the way, for August 24, pwede compound entry if you want. For accrued expense, same concept lang tayo ano? Except in this case, Tayo ang may utang, so notes payable. So instead of interest income and accrued interest receivable, we have interest expense and accrued interest payable. I'll leave the entries here, study nyo na lang. Question Ano ang pinagkaiba ni accrual sa accounts payable and accounts receivable? Ganito siya bes. Sa accounts payable and receivable ay under ni accrual. All accounts payable and accounts receivable are accruals. But not all accruals are accounts payable or receivable. For accrued expense and accounts payable comparison, both are liabilities. However, in accounts payable, supplier invoice have been received and recorded. The amounts in the invoices are the payable amounts, kaya exact amount yung recording. In contrast with accrued expenses, which most of the time, the amounts are just estimates. Wala pa tayong natatanggap na supplier invoice or bills na pagbabasehan kung magkano ba talaga yung utang natin. Let's move to unearned income. My cash. Pero income is to be recorded pa lang. In recording the cash received, there are two methods. The income method and liability method. Sa income method, initial recording is we record the whole amount we received as income. Sa liability method naman, the cash received is initially recorded as a liability. Initially for both, debit cash kasi kung di ka nag-debit ng cash, may nagkupit. Debit cash, 400. Then, a credit of 400 for income, for income method, while a credit of unearned income of 400 for liability method. For this illustration, assuming income is divided equally for 4 months. Pero syempre, in accounting, never assume unless otherwise is stated. Sa problem, may estate naman yan. Going back, since equal ang income per month, dapat may tig 100 si first, second, third, and fourth month. The adjusting entry for the first month under income method is a debit of income 300 and credit of unearned income for 300. So ang nangyari, nagbawas tayo ng income and nagset tayo ng unearned income. So we now have a net of 100 for income, which is the correct income for the month, and 300 unearned income which is to be earned for the next 3 months. For the liability method, the adjusting entry is a debit of unearned income, 100, and a credit of income, 100. So we now have an income of 100 and an earned income of 400 less 100 is 300. Same result? Same. For the next three adjusting entries, same na silang dalawa kasi napantay na nung first adjusting entry yung balance ng accounts. We just have to lessen the liability account and increase the income account. 
So here, after the first adjusting entry, the balance of an earned income is 300. After the second adjusting entry, the balance is 200. After the third, balance is 100. After the fourth, no more liability. Finish na. For the income, because of adjusting entries, income is correctly recorded as 100 per month. Again, for prepaid expense, same concept with unearned income. In here, we have the expense method and asset method. Instead of income, we use the expense account and instead of unearned income, we use prepaid expense. Initially for both methods, cash is credited kasi naglabas tayo ng pera. For expense method, the whole amount given is debited as expense. And for asset method, the whole amount given is debited as prepaid expense. For the first month, the appropriate expense should be recorded so adjusting entries are as follows. Second, third, and fourth adjusting entries are same for both methods. Next, 